Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boss Rush Podcast. I'm your host, the invited and excited Eddie B. And joining me is Boss Man himself, Mr. Corey Derry. Hello. Good to be Hi. here. <laughs> Hello. How are you on this special episode? <laughs> I'm great, Ed. Thank you for asking. You know, I've been, I've been, you know, hanging out and playing some games and doing the things and i, I don't know i'm fine i'm just i'm being i'm just, <laughs> I'm just being stupid uh, uh, how are uh, you ed how are you doing i am hype uh there was some announcements today that just made me twirl and yeah. normally when i get to twirling <laughs> i twirl for a long time yeah should we so. pre- should we preface this by saying that Okay, I'm just I'm behind the scenes for people who only listen to the audio version. Uh, we usually record this show live on Saturdays, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the show comes out on audio feeds on Mondays. Well, we're recording on Tuesday f- this week uh, for the following Monday because this this Saturday when we normally record the show, we're doing our Tomb Raider Definitive Edition book club. So... There's your behind the scenes look at recording because scheduling is hard, <laughs> which yes, I've been really struggling with the last two weeks or so. so. <laughs> hey Ed, by the way, can you hear my fan? Yes, I can hear your fan. Oh no, hold on. How about now? Can you hear my fan now? No, okay. cannot. Can you hear my? No, I just okay. I I just forgot it was on and I just it's. Hopefully the the intro music to the audio will drown it out until I fixed it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> fix it in post. Everybody knows. Fix it in post. That's what I always say. I actually was watching uh, an episode of um, was it of High Block? It was me and you and Jesse, uh, and we were just having a like we have we we was in the show, but we were just literally having a good time, just like chatting up for the next for twenty five minutes and laughing while chatting like half of the way. The Nintendo, the uh, Nintendo pop like music was still going. <laughs> I was just like, dang, God, look, it's just trash. Yeah, it sometimes. The old yeah, the old music was like two and a half minutes long, and like I know a couple of episodes for sure, for sure. I just forgot to cut it down and do the like the fade <laughs> out like the f- music fade out right and yeah and then sometimes like I would forgot I would forget to lower it from like a hundred percent volume to twenty five to begin with <laughs> and then we would just yeah it's it's <sighs> the things you learn as you podcast for a long time and then the things you think you learn and then you mess it up and then you still have to start over you know what i mean it's just yeah uh, Ooh, these xbox was, shirts are on sale sorry it was because it was uh 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 it was when we was on ngr too i was just like this was a year ago i'm like wow yeah dude can you believe ngr was still going a year ago it feels like five years ago <laughs> exactly. every everything this year feels like it was five years ago though so <laughs> uh so uh but yeah i'm doing great uh just really like hype and stuff i've been i literally been having a positive vibe this weekend i don't know if you've seen it or anything like i asked people how do they have it's really balanced my my amazing attitude this last week and a half um you've been no you you're always you're always positive ed that's why i like you that's why i keep you around uh, thank you. What? Well, <laughs> you never got the chance to answer. How do you like your grilled cheese? And what are your sides? Do How you? do I like my grilled cheese? I'm not a big grilled cheese guy. I'm not a big cheese guy in general. To ah. be honest with you, uh, I do. I do occasionally like a good grilled cheese. You just kind of just plain and simple. You just butter it on one mm-hmm. side, and sometimes you have to gr- to to get some crispy bacon in there. Some people were recommending it that uh, with bacon. They it's, like it with bacon. But to me, at that point, I'm just like, why don't I just make a BLT instead of a grilled cheese? Because I prefer, I prefer a BLT over a grilled cheese. Really? I'm not, I'm not a cheese guy, man. I, okay. I don't like. I just break, break this BLT down. Like, is there a special way? Like, well, you get the 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 way I really like it is okay. So. Cracker Barrel sells sourdough toast, right? They sell the sourdough bread. 
Yeah. Sourdough bread. How did I miss that? I don't know. Keep up. Sourdough bread. Okay. Yes. You put, you put it down in the toaster. All right. While it's toasting, you cook bacon. You make it real crispy. Okay. Real crispy. Don't put butter on on the toast, though. Okay. Not butter. You, okay. So when, when the bacon's done, maybe dry it off. Get some of the grease off. You don't want it super mm-hmm. greasy. Yes. So when the toast pops up, you lather both pieces with mayonnaise. Like you'll just lather both pieces with yes. mayonnaise. And then you put a piece of lettuce down on one side, like leaf lettuce. Just one piece. You don't need too much lettuce on this thing, okay? It's not healthy anyway. Just put a piece of lettuce down. Then you put like f- like five or six pieces of bacon on there. And mm-hmm. then you put two thinly sliced tomatoes on top and put the other piece of bread on top. And then you cut it in half and then you just go eat it. Ah, I never thought of sourdough bread. Oh, it's so good. It has to be it has to be Cracker Barrel sourdough bread because like other sourdough bread, sometimes it comes crunchy, and sometimes yeah. you just it's hit or miss. So if you get Cracker Barrel sourdough bread, they they make it in white and wheat. Wheat's pretty good, but I do recommend the white bread. Just saying. Oh, of course. I mean, Wheat is to me. Wheat is for the healthy version. White is for white is for. Yeah, but if I you're lathering like it in mayonnaise and bacon, it's not healthy. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, look, I'm just going to just put this on and cast my cares away. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Oh, I never thought because I don't eat a lot of BLT. Um, and I have nothing against bacon and stuff. I was just like, I might have to spice it up because uh, uh, there's a, a, a sweet pepper uh, bacon that Burger not Burger King Dunkin' Donuts make. And I'm like, I wonder do they sell this in store? Like if they got like special kind of bacon, or if if I do bacon, I like to do the turkey bacon because uh, I do that with my with sausage now too, the turkey sausage. Um, it's not too heavy on my stomach, and it doesn't be like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom because I'm about to blow it up. It, it doesn't do that to my stomach. So I wonder if turkey bacon would do some wonders. Um, and then, yeah, just some good some good mayo, some good bread. I, you know, I really don't know about the bread, but the sourdough sounds good to do. It is good. Uh, so I, I may have to try that one. Yeah. Um, it is good. You should you should definitely try it. It's it's delicious. Yeah, because I don't eat I don't have my eat my toasted. And now that you mentioned, I'm like, yeah, I think I should toast this. And who puts butter on BLT? Ugh. I don't know who's who's that weirdo. Who's who's that guy? I mean, <laughs> I I understand that, like if you're gonna make a BLT and then you want to f- like put the, the actually. If you want a breakfast BLT, what you can do is put, instead of toasting, lightly mm-hmm. toast the bread first, but then you put it in a skillet with butter and then kind of make it like grilled cheese bread, right? And yes. then you fry up an egg and then you, like a like a, like an over easy egg, and then you put two over easy eggs Ooh. on instead of lettuce. Or I guess with lettuce too, but without well, lettuce, not- you can just, it's really good too. Do know what my my mom she does it uh with the egg, um yeah with it, like so it's the it's it's still the BLT on it, but then she adds the egg on it, and I'm like, ooh, this is so good. But we don't do it for breakfast; we do it sometimes for a snack or for dinner or lunch. Mm-hmm. So so I mean, I'm I'm all about I'm all about breakfast food and. I'm all about eggs on everything. Like I'll eat egg on anything. I like I eggs I think are secretly one of my favorite foods ever. Mm. So um yeah. Which actually led it which actually led it to the following question for the next day. How do you like your fried rice? Uh and I Speaking like my fried report. rice. Okay. It's funny you mention that because my wife and I have had <laughs> fried rice like twice out of the last eight days there's this place by my house called, yes it's called fry, uh, it's called a uh, rice paper uh if you live in the akron area it's called rice paper it's in fairlawn and uh ed say something real quick hello everybody okay okay well i was a little worried because your audio i thought wasn't coming in it just happens to just be really quiet on your end uh so what you do you uh, well okay so 
rice paper is this uh is a fried rice place kind of they have curry they have fried rice they have all kinds of things it's a thai place i got the indonesian fried rice okay and it is oh please break this down because i'm excited right now i'm about to i'm about to okay so the base the base of this dish okay is red curry based fried rice okay so it's just fried rice with like it's it's fried in red curry and some eggs right Mm -hmm. and the you know base of this dish right okay grilled onions grilled really great grilled onions grilled shrimp like 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 seasoned grilled shrimp Mm -hmm. broccoli and the best grilled chicken i think i've ever put in my mouth really yeah it's so good it is so good i would eat there like it's one of my new favorite places that we've eaten and it's so good it's it's on the map when i come down and then uh yeah for i mean yeah we'll get it whenever you whenever you're allowed to come back <laughs> uh, <Next year. laughs> yeah so uh that that's my new favorite place and my wife gets the uh hawaiian fried rice and it's just or mango fried rice hawaiian i think it's mango fried rice and it's it's chicken and shrimp with like a mango salsa on top of fried rice okay yeah that would be mango because hawaiian does it um yeah. they don't have it the hawaiian has the pineapple pieces yeah i couldn't remember um, if it was mango or pineapple yeah the hawaiian one because it don't have no meat in the hawaiian one unless you ask for it yeah uh, so it, it's it's really good it's so good man yeah i i normally uh because my uh the chinese place that i live by they're still close and i'm like they have some of the best fried rice and i tell them don't do the shrimp um, but if they're going to do it, like I, I want it just the vegetables or I want it with pork. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, uh, yeah. wow, so, so good. Uh, there's also a it, place by my house, speaking of rice, not totally related to this fried rice discussion. Uh, it's called Casa del Rio Express. And we started mm-hmm. going there instead of Chipotle because it is so good. And like their Mexican rice is so good. <gasps> it's so uh, good. <laughs> If you got buy Mexican rice, I'm there. Yeah. So that's on the list also. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it's pretty tasty. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's some. There's some good places to eat around here, man. And like, then to wrap it all the way back around to the grilled cheese discussion. Yes. Uh, there's a place here that sells fr- fancy grilled cheeses called called the Melt, and it's like a it's like this hipster fancy grilled cheese but you can get whatever you want on your grilled cheese like the last time it's been so long since i went there but like we got i had a uh barbecue pulled pork grilled <gasps> cheese with and but in the barbecue pulled pork there were three huge onion rings melted inside the grilled cheese Wait, also what <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was awesome mm. <laughs> oh. Then I wondered why I needed Jesus. to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think I still need to do that? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so, um, just that's amazing, dude. Literally amazing. Uh, I, I, I. That's why I just posted posted that like on my Twitter page. I'm just like, you know, this is Monday motivation. I just like, I want to hear what everybody. Uh, cause I don't know if people had grilled cheese Monday or anything, uh, or they felt like it. Like I want, I wanted some grilled cheese, but I didn't, I don't got a place that makes it. And I didn't feel like making it myself, but I'm just like, I always wonder how people would like certain foods, you know, mm. and everything, whether it's comfortable, um, and everything. Uh, so it was a uh, uh, good, oh, dude, yes. When I come back to Ohio, we have got to chow down. Uh, yeah. So. I'm telling you, man. There's some good. There's some good things to eat around here. Recently, yeah. uh, anyone in the chat had they? Did they say anything? Did you guys have any grill like grilled cheese or BLT or like fried rice? How you guys would like it? All, like, I, all Asa said was, uh, uh, "Well, I'm I am into this." And that's all he said. <laughs> so, 
All right. Uh, well, before we go on, we're going to get into some housekeeping real quick. Uh, for those who don't know, this is the Boss Rush Podcast. We're each and every week live on Twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games Live. Corey, Jesse, and myself, as well as our friends from around the internet, come together to share our passion for games. If you can't join us live on Saturdays, no big deal. You can head on over to YouTube.com slash Boss Rush Games or your favorite podcast service Monday mornings to catch the show. Remember to like, subscribe, follow, rate, and review wherever you consume it. Follow us on Twitter at Bosch Rush Podcast. And remember, you can see all of our content on BoschRushGames.com. So, we're going to get into some quick news bits before we get into what we've been playing. Um, and I, like I said uh, before we, uh, like we were talking in the pre-show, just hanging out. Um, I was twirling today because of all the Nintendo news that came out. Um, if people don't know that Pikmin 3 Deluxe is coming October 30th. Um, this one is going to have all the DLC and some new story content, so I cannot wait. Um, and they also announced that Ikaruga is getting a physical copy for Switch and for PlayStation 4. Um, there isn't a release date, but it is coming soon to the West. I know Japan is getting it September 24th. So if you guys, I think one of I think uh, one of Jesse's predictions came true because uh, I was listening. Uh, actually, I think Monday. Yeah, Monday. I was listening to our prediction show, uh, going back to see like. Our people's predictions and stuff coming um and shout out to brody i i think uh he when his xbox was he pretty much got them all right like he was knocking them. i'm like dang that that was right <laughs> that i'm like that prediction kind of came true in a sense and so uh i think one of jesse's with the pikmin 3 one uh is a little bit right um so yeah like I messaged you boss real quick. Like, but what what, what do you think? Cause uh, Pikmin three is just mwah. It's yeah, so I, good. I'm excited. Uh, it's I'm not. It's not my favorite Pikmin game, but I think it is. It is definitely one that uh, was severely underplayed, and I think it is a very good Pikmin game. Uh, my favorite is still the first one. Uh, I know that's it's. I don't. It's just my favorite. Uh, but three is really good. Also, I still, still to this day stand by that it's it's the best way to. Uh, mm -hmm. It's how do I say it? It's the only. It's it's one of like three games that's worth using the Wii remote in nunchuck. <laughs> yes, uh, and I I don't and I'm assuming that they're gonna do that also with the Joy Cons. Uh, yeah, I I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, it's uh, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. And then like probably on the, yeah, probably on the go, you'll probably be able to touch some things with your hand and everything, or a touch stylus, um, with that. Uh, and I think a lot of people are willing to play this. I, someone made the comment they were just like. If Nintendo do all these ports for the rest of the year, you know, is it a safe? Is it, are they safe? Is it a good thing for Nintendo? And I, I say it is because I think I feel like Nintendo is smart to be like, let's not put out any heavy hitters yet. Uh, because Microsoft and Sony is coming out with their own heavy hitters. So let them have what they have and then let us when all of that dies down and people are trying to catch up and games are still being made, let's hit them with our stuff. You know? Um, so there's a really, really good balance that way. And it, to me, Percy is smart. Um, I definitely am picking it up, uh, picking it through on, in October. Like, that, right now, that is the game of the month to get yeah so i mean pikmin like I, I mean like we were talking before the post show like there's only like f four or five games left that really deserve the the switch port right like i mean mm -hmm. i mean yeah you can go down the list and and let's not count games that kind of got sequels like yoshi's woolly world or or kirby right like those games but you still have like Super Mario 3D World. You have both Zelda games. You have Xenoblade Chronicles X. I mean, that's kind of it, unless you want to count the uh, Fatal Frame game that came over digital only. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I mean, there's there's still very very few games that that could make the transition over, uh, <laughs> I, unless you started doing like Wii games, you know, like yeah, which I mean, I know they have explored that idea, right? But do you know what? It's great that you mentioned the Black Maiden game because that was kind of like episodic and stuff. I think they, I think that's going to get a deluxe version. Well, now, now thinking about it, like for a good horror game for October, like, like fix some things and just throw it on one whole cartridge. Like, I think that would be, I think I'm, it would be a nice holdover game for like $40. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think if you threw it on the eShop for like 30 or 40 bucks, I think people would yes. eat it up. Uh, okay, so there's there's a few other ones like Star Fox Zero. I think would be an okay one if they fix some of the control issues because like it's not a bad game. It's not a great game, mm-hmm. but it's not a bad game. Uh, they were just so dedicated to that gamepad. Uh, NES Remix. I think those games could do gangbusters on the Switch at this point. Um, just do that and the 3DS version. Just do all of that as a deluxe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of it. You know, I mean, like, Nintendo Land has zero chance because you need the gamepad for that. Uh, I'm yes. looking, I'm looking at Nintendo Life's Wii Wii U games that aren't on Switch yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse could be interesting, but you would really have to really only play that in handheld mode, which I don't think they want to do. Um, yeah, plus they already got a Kirby game on it, so like two Kirby games, so it's just like going back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's really it, unless you're talking about third party games devil's third uh no uh i mean paper I'll... paper mario color splash wouldn't come because it, we just got a paper mario game zombie U probably yeah. not so i mean like there, there's enough there that's still not over i guess like what seven or eight major games left mm-hmm. i would say in wii sports hd where's that at <laughs> Oh, th- that is true. Well, I mean, I'm not kidding. Like that sound, that would be amazing. You know, it would be. And I know EA didn't really support Wii U, but if they do that Mass Effect trilogy that we all wanted, maybe. I th- uh, see. It would have been cool to ha- have that gamepad version of it on Switch. Um, but. Unfortunately, you can't because there's not really a gamepad. You know, everything is right there on the tablet and stuff. Um, Because I I would have loved that version on Switch. But I'm like, if you're going to give us the whole trilogy, give it to us. Like, let that be part of their seven games coming to Switch thing. Yeah. If we were going to talk about third party. Um, indies Indies are very weird. In a sense, because we got so much good new ones coming out, it's hard to be like, where do you, which indies do you go back to, and port over, or what indie games really didn't make it to make it to Wii U, that should be on Switch. And there's there's probably a lot, but I mean, yeah, but the the Switch has a ton of <laughs> of even old indie games that you wouldn't mm-hmm. even think about this time, you know. Yeah. All, all I want to know is where where's my where's my Tomb Raider games? That's all I want. Not indies, yeah. but where are they at? Come on. Yeah, I kind of wonder, um, because that story that we talked about on um, uh, Power Block with them, with with a lot of the older Tomb Raider games coming, I'm like, we want the modern ones too. Like push push that one. You guys are using that modern font font, so push those games on Switch. <laughs> we need them. Yeah, yeah. So, so which also kind of reminds me, like, wait for it. Where's our Double Dragon games at? Like, why haven't we got those Double Dragon games that came on, like, PS? I think PS3. It may be PS4 and Xbox. Oh, those the like Neon and stuff. Yeah, because nobody wants them. Neon was bad. Hmm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was bad. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we should move on because there is some. Okay, so there's two, three conf- conflicting things going on right now that 
kind of made anger uh, that anger gamers. First, the Spider Man announcement coming to PS4 for Marvel's Avengers. I don't understand uh-huh. why people are so surprised by that. I, I, re- I mean, Marvel and PlayStation have an exclusive deal to put S- Spider Man on PlayStation. They literally made a whole game about it. I don't understand why people are surprised. You know, I just. I mean, if you're an Xbox player, it sucks, but I don't know why people are surprised because this literally just happened two years ago. So, I think people, I think people felt feels like, why are they getting Spider Man and we're not getting nothing? Because and Sony then, paid for the marketing, and Sony paid for the exclusive deals, and Sony's in bed with Marvel. I I literally told Luke that. I wrote to Luke. I was just like, I know it's a big deal, but if the money if the money talks, the marketing is gonna walk, <laughs> pretty much, you know. I, and I I guess it was just like, if Sony's going to get Spider Man, give Xbox player Xbox players some kind of exclusive that Sony's not going to get, because they were it felt but like they are not going um, to because Sony paid for it. That's the right. thing. Microsoft isn't paying for it. And besides that, like, there's a lot of rumors floating around, uh, especially because, like, there's what there was a tweet today from Enron Khan that said, if you think this Spider-Man Sony news is bad, you're going to be really disappointed when 2021 or 2021 rolls around. And I'm like, yeah, well, I believe it. So, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's. I guess every I was thinking about Soul Calibur 2, the equivalent of that, where GameCube had Link, uh, Sony had Hihachi, and um, Xbox had uh, Spa. And it was just like, for these exclusive characters, if you want them, you could go to that system and get them. But the fairness was that everybody got an exclusive character. So you just decide to choose which version of the game you want to play with that character? Everybody see that the GameCube <laughs> came, pretty much came. Like a lot of people was confused. Like, why would you put Hahachi in, and he is a fist fighter and not a melee fighter? Where Link makes it, and Spawn makes it, in a sense, you know. Uh, but it's not on. The, I guess it's not on that level when it comes to exclusive characters and everything. And I, I kind of feel like, look, if you get the PlayStation Four version and you get Spider Man, great. He's just another character model that you play. I'm like, what does it does it add anything to the game? You know, and def- and we'll see this weekend because I'm going to. I hope people are able to stream it, and I hope people do talk about it. Like if if this is a if this game is a eight or a seven and it's very average, um, this Spider Man thing is not going to make any difference at all. Yeah, I mean, I I really don't think so, but who knows. But I honestly don't care because I think the Avengers game looks really bad. So I think, I mean, I could be wrong, but I just, I think it looks kind of bad. So I'm not getting it. So I really don't care. I, I, there's, look, there's already too many games as a service vying for my attention and I barely have enough time to play any of them. So what? Excluding Destiny. (laughs) I barely have time to play Destiny. So, ah, I mean, I mean, we'll talk about it later, but like, I'm limiting myself to two days a week to Destiny because I need to do other things for this. So, yeah, uh, which leads it to the second one with Xbox uh, X Cloud not really going to be on um, Apple's services, so you won't be able to do it on their iOS. Um, and it would me, me and you were talking that why would Apple allow the beta to happen, but now they are not allowing this system to happen on it because it's Apple and they probably didn't understand what was happening. And then they're like, Oh, well, we can't make money off of this, so uh, we're not going to allow it. And it's like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like if Microsoft wants to get around this, they're going to have to like 
charge for the app on on iOS devices, which which sucks. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but like. A dollar is a dollar, right? If you're mad about a dollar, then you probably shouldn't be buying video games. You know, I mean, it's to me, it's that simple. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of mad about this, and I, I am a hundred percent positive it's not Microsoft or Xbox. It's a hundred percent on Apple because they did this mm-hmm. to uh, what was the service? They did it to like Comixology and Kendall and. Uh, you know, all these other apps that had in game purchases or in app purchases that, that, you know, linked directly to their website and not, not the app store. Uh, Mm -hmm. The one thing that I am really confused about is that steam link, the steam link app does the same thing and that's on iOS and it's essentially the same thing. So I don't really understand. Uh, I don't know. It's. I think it's BS. It'll come to. It'll come to iOS eventually. I think it's just a matter of like figuring out what they're doing, and even if they mm-hmm. have to charge a little bit more for this service, I would be willing to pay like twenty to twenty five dollars a month for XCloud plus Game Pass. But I don't it, know. It was. It's. It's. I was thinking about it. I'm just. I still when I'm like, why you guys are not marketing this first on your Surface tablet, and then on Android, you mm-hmm. know, phones and tablets and stuff. I'm like, because you have your own tablet, you can get people to buy your Surface tablet, and you know, you guys make a lot of that money. You know, recuperate that money, and. That service being on Android, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I mean, I understand they'll still be getting the fifteen dollars a month because you got to have Ultimate for this um, deal. Uh, but it's kind of weird. Just like, why wouldn't you market your Surface tablet first? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's because they have a they have a deal with Samsung, and Samsung's probably paying for the marketing, and mm-hmm. they probably have the like a four K, whatever phone that they're going to be able to play it in you know what i you know what i mean like it's just it's just marketing deals and it's it's able to make money you know what i mean it's it's just one of those things um which i would i'm i might actually look into getting a cheap android tablet to do this uh just to whatever i know my wife has one so i might test it out there uh so we'll see i it's it'll come to ios at some point i would almost put money on it it's not a matter of if it's when and it's when microsoft and apple come to an agreement and see Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think apple's gonna see a lot of this kind of backlash and then they're gonna and microsoft and them are gonna come to an agreement probably early next year i would say uh so that's my guess but it still sucks that it's not going to be available to ios users at launch it's a big bummer Because we were talking about Apple Arcade, I'm like, I don't even know how that is doing. Yeah, I mean, I they just don't care about ga- like gaming. Apple just doesn't care about gaming. You know, they're making all their money off the back end off these bad mobile games, and that's all they care about. Right, because they they don't even they don't even advertise Apple Arcade anymore. Yeah, I don't even I yeah I don't know. It's just whatever to me. It, that's all. Dude, I wonder who's still paying the five dollars a month for it and just haven't taken it off. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so, what they're counting on, right? Is for people to sign up for it that first month, they get it for free, and then uh... forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the, one of the third ones, which is uh, goodness, so Mulan is coming to Disney uh, Plus, and it's thirty dollars. And the only way that you can keep it if you decide to buy it is that you got to keep the Disney Plus subscription. Uh, if it go, if you get rid of the su- uh, subscription, you don't get to keep the movie. And that's kind of the same way if you think about it with PlayStation Plus. Um, and I wonder if it's the same thing with Xbox Live Go. Like, if you download the games for Go uh, stuff, you can't play them if you don't have it, have that service. Um, I believe that's that's correct. I know with PlayStation, yes, it's the same thing. Um, but you get those games free. Um, 
due to the fact. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing year. that it's the same thing that Amazon does. If you don't subscribe to Amazon Prime and you buy a movie on there, you can't access the movie. It's the same thing. So if you if you buy a movie through Amazon Prime, if it goes, if you get rid of Prime, you don't get. Mm-hmm. But if you re up, if you re up it, then you get it back. You know, it's it's mm. it's the same thing as the PlayStation Plus games where they give it to you for now. Granted, I mean it's not exactly the same thing, but if you don't pay for the service, you don't keep the games that they give you. But if you right, you know, re sign up for it, then you'll get it back. You know, so yeah, it's it's those things are connected to that service, and mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense that we give this to you and you don't take our service if you want this you got to keep our service um with play i think with playstation plus even with games with go is that you pay whether it's game pass or you pay whatever monthly fee um or you pay the year uh the year month uh this stuff ha- you know this stuff happens and i think it's even with even with switch online like if you do your stuff in the cloud by having switch online if you get rid of it you don't get your cloud stuff back in a sense um so but i think a lot of people i think a lot of people are more upset probably about the price than they are about it being connected to disney plus i think people would have been like you know if if this was 1499 or even 1999 i think people would be fine with it but it's such a retail price um I mean, the thing to me is, is like, it's no different than if you go to the movie theater with someone, you're going to pay $30. Like it, it, that to me, it it just, you're paying for a, you're paying for the convenience to watch it in your own home. And if you have more than, if you have three people watching it with you, that's $10 a person and then you get to keep it. So like, that's, I don't, I just don't understand the problem. People just like to complain on the internet. That's what it is to me. So it's it's just I just don't understand, you know. And I I don't care if people come at me and say I'm a Disney fanboy or whatever, but like that's just how it works. Like it just you're paying the premium to watch it early in the comfort of your own home. And if you like movie tickets at my movie theater are thirteen dollars, thirteen dollars. So if me and my wife went, that's $26, right? So yeah. basically, I'm paying the $4 to not drive to the movie theater and eat overpriced popcorn. Like, you know what I mean? Like, to me, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think it's fine. Yeah, I I don't have Disney Plus, so I don't have to worry about it. If I do. I want- <laughs> Yay! Uh, if I want to see it, I I think personally for me, I'll just wait to it comes to like DVD or yeah. Blu-ray. I mean, actually, more more Blu-ray because at least if I'm paying that same price, I get to keep it. The only thing that I'm missing out is I don't get to watch it with everybody else. But if other people are buying the Blu-ray version, then we all are watching it at whatever time we feel like it, um, and then we can buy the snacks and everything there. Uh, we also got a state of play that is happening now uh at the do at the time of this recording um we are not able to watch it um we may do a recap or you lebron and jesse could do a recap next week Corey, when you guys talk about it um but it i think it's going to be 40 minutes long i believe that's what they said uh and they're going to be focusing a lot on indies and I believe PSVR. Um, you would not be getting any PS5 announcements. So please, people, if you're going to watch this, don't act crazy about it. Don't be negative. You can't critique it if the show is not. If the, if the show is feeling like a snooze fest, you can't critique it as that. But don't be upset and don't be negative because, you know. The the attitudes that we see at that last Microsoft showcase um, is still lingering, and I we want to be positive about uh, these showcases and be excited for what if we set expectations so high, they'll never be met. 
you know, just even look at the Nintendo Mini that was thrown, that was shown last week. Like people were upset about it. I'm like, it's a mini epi- It's a mini. They are. They already said that they're not doing a full Nintendo Direct because all of that stuff takes time. You know, all of these with what's going on, all of these developers gotta try to still make the game and cut these trailers and everything, and then to send them to Nintendo. And Nintendo probably got to send them down, send them around to their editors, and they gotta cut them. They gotta do the voiceovers. They gotta do a lot of stuff, and like that stuff takes time. You know, it's not a slapdash thing. And for us to watch it and then be upset, come on now. Now, State of Play has been kind of disappointing in some in, in the past. But they did a good... I feel like they did a good job when they did Ghost of Tsushima. That was a really good one. They... Um, not so much the PlayStation 5 reveal or anything, because that was a State of Play. But some of the past State of Plays have been... They've been learning... They have been adjusting and they have been good and they've been delivering and stuff. So I I'm really am waiting to see this. Um, I definitely will be watching it after work. But uh, would you be partaking into a Corey like later on, uh, yeah. like that night or anything? I mean, if it's just indies and and PSVR, I'll probably just look at the highlights on IGN or whatever site I feel like looking at that day. You know, I just mm-hmm. it's not it's not a big deal to me i i don't care about psvr and any indie stuff will probably be shown off in another showcase at some point anyway so i to me it just doesn't matter i i probably won't watch it i'll probably just ask you hey is there anything cool looking and then you'll probably tell me and i'll be like cool and that'll be (laughs) that'll be the extent (laughs) so well i'm excited to watch it because i like I said, the the summer is getting close to an end, and I feel like um, this E3 this year, I still feel like it's E3. I think this E3 this year has been hit and miss, depending on uh, what everybody has seen and what they have partaked in. Um, because I didn't even watch the PC gaming one this year. It just, it just didn't feel the same. It's, it's very weird. It's just like mm, last year was so good, but this year it's just like ah, I I don't know. Um, but I am interested to see what they have for PlayStation that's coming for PS4 because they still the system still got some life life in them. It's good to see that Ghost of Tsushima is kind of their swan song, and I'm excited to see what they got. Uh, for the rest of the year before uh, PS5 comes out, so, uh, but that's kind of pretty much all the news that we're going to dive in, uh, because we're going to jump into what are uh, we've been getting down to gaming wise, our gaming get down. So I'm going to start with you, Corey. Uh, what have you been getting down to? Uh, I've been playing a lot of of Destiny lately. Uh, obviously, I mean just trying to keep up with the content going on and mm-hmm. trying to level I just I'm trying to be prepared for the next expansion. I don't I don't know what the story stuff looks like. I, this week is Iron Banner, so I I've been playing a lot of that. I played a lot of it last night with my friend Mitch and uh we've really just been trying to f- finish some of the exotic quests that are going away at the end of the season and uh you know, it's it's been it's pretty stagnant right now honestly i think it's because they're trying to extend the season now that it's uh (laughs) eight weeks longer than originally anticipated oh wow (laughs) uh so you know that the story content like the first three weeks there is huge story drops and huge story missions and stuff but Mm -hmm. after that it was kind of like it they just it was done you know they just didn't uh they haven't really been dropping stories content uh yet so uh I've been been playing that. I've gotten a few decent weapons and and armor pieces lately. Uh, I'm leveling up slowly. S- started a hunter. I I re-rolled a warlock just because I didn't really care for the way they looked. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I just got new characters in there. Uh, so I've been playing that. I started Sunset Overdrive. Uh, after our conversation in our group chat, I was really frustrated that you just can't start a new game. You have to go through all these hoops to delete saves and everything. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, 
it kind of sucked. But after I got through all that, I I played probably the first hour of it, and it's it's really fun. You know, I forgot how fun it was to move around that world. Uh, mm-hmm. The jumping and stuff really feels like Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> yes, like it it feels like it feels like the jumping and running around is ratchet and clank and then moving and grinding and kind of just like moving like when you're in the <laughs> air feels a lot like spider-man you know so just, it's it's uh without the uh the web swinging of course so it, it's mentioned when you mentioned sunset overdrive it, it came to my mind because um uh, i like i started literally fresh um and i just i think what kept me playing it was just like focusing on that game just like let me stick with this one game and finish it all the way and i enjoyed it yeah so uh, i mean i've the last week or so i've been trying to make like a gaming calendar really mm-hmm. <laughs> of just like okay here's the games that you're going to focus on on playstation and xbox those are separate because those are games i can focus on on the tv and then my switch list is separate because obviously i can play that when you know, we're watching TV or, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So that list is separate. Uh, so I'm working on that. Uh, Maybe I'll have more to talk about on that on a different day, but, uh, what else was I playing? Oh, I've, I've been, I played a little bit of, of the master chief collection. I'm really thinking about getting back into doing all the campaigns in order. Uh, I really want to play halo wars and halo wars too, but We'll we'll see about that. I, but I I played a lot of the Master Chief Collection multiplayer the, this past weekend, and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's really fun. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's really really fun. I've actually been playing a lot the last couple weeks, uh, like bits and pieces of a lot. Not really sitting down and focusing on one thing. That's like it's really been hard to focus on <laughs> playing just one game recently. Because like by the time yeah. I by the time we give my kid a bath and put her to bed and by the time she falls asleep and then me and my wife talk or do something for like a couple of seconds or recording a show or anything, by the time I sit down and actually play a game, I want something that is nonsensical and something I could just play Ease and not think into. about, you know, like comfort yeah. food. So like that's where Halo and Destiny come in a lot. Which is weird because like I I I gotta jump in Destiny. I need to jump in Monster Hunter. Like I want to start like literally dead yeah, space. Like, I, re- I gotta I finish re- Okami. I re-downloaded Monster Hunter on Xbox because the way laron has been talking about it and playing it, and then you know just him talking about it on the last episode was like, I feel like Monster Hunter is a game that I would really like if I actually poured some time into it, and so mm-hmm. I re-downloaded it, but. I want to have like three or four hours to sit and play it, not an hour and a half before I go to bed, you know? Uh, yes. So, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean because like I, when I was, when I restarted back on PlayStation, it was just like, I was put in three to four hours in the mornings before I went to work. And I was just like, I need to like really dedicate time to this, um, to this game and like try to learn the inside out and that's the same way with destiny it's just like when you the way that you talk about it it's just like i i'm like it feels like i'm missing out out on so much um and i need to jump in and like like catch up and everything yeah um so i've been playing those i've been i finished tomb raider which was so much fun i forgot how long that game was Mm-hmm. Like I like there was literally three or four points in that game where I thought I was almost done. And then I would message you and you're like, no, you're not even close. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not even close. I feel like <laughs> I'm close. And then I wouldn't be close. And then I would message you again. I'm like, am I close? No, you're not close. And it's funny. Cause like I beat that game. I looked at my, I looked at my Xbox 360 achievements for that game. I beat that game. Like I played all the way through it yeah on 360 and i don't remember probably 75 percent of that game i don't remember really yeah. i remembered i would because i played it on ps3 i was just like okay i know what i need to do and so that's why when i played it on xbox one i was just like okay this is a short game because i think i beat like i told you i beat it like in three days yeah like and like i'm looking at these I'm looking at all these... I'm like, who are all these characters? I don't remember any of these characters. Like, the nerdy guy that... that, Spoilers for Tomb Raider. 
eight year old game where he like dies in the boat, like sacrifices himself in the boat so mm-hmm. Lara can get out. It's like I I don't even remember any of that. So I do. It's because uh, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of characters are killing themselves off, and that's why when Rise came, it was just like. Where's everybody at besides uh I I knew the once Yeah, dude. I'm just like I only remember Jonah and like I remember her friend Sam, but I didn't remember the whole story arc behind her. I totally forgot that like the whole point was for them to kidnap her to transfer the the sun god's essence into her. Like I totally forgot her, that was a yes. thing. Like I remember I remember the weird guy with the staff. Like I remember him Matthias. Yes. Like I remember him and I remember he was the bad guy, but I didn't remember that they were, <laughs> you know, like I just, I just didn't remember. So, uh. right, because like the final fight is when you fight that that big guardian thing mm-hmm. uh, that you know that you see throughout the whole game. It's just like, oh, okay, I end up beating him, and then it's like cutscene to the end, and we're going to talk about that on the podcast. But uh, yeah, I, for some reason I thought it was short, and maybe it's because I was doing a lot of the side stuff mm-hmm. to make it longer. But I'm like, man, this game is like, and I played it on normal. I didn't play it on easy. I played the game on normal, and I'm just like, I'm getting through this quick. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, was it really this easy, or is it because I know what I'm doing? Yeah, I. So, but I I really enjoyed it. I like the, I like the bow stuff. I like I just I really liked that game. I love that game. It just reaffirmed like, oh yeah, I really love the Tomb Raider games. They're just, mm. they're amazing. So, I finished that. I've been playing through Okami. Uh, I'm about two hours into it. I still don't really know how I feel about it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, but that's the game I'm probably going to focus on the most in the current run-up of things because that's our next book club and I need to finish it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the game I'm going to be focusing on the most in the, for the time being. Uh, and then I was I was also playing Rhyme, which I got about two hours into, and then they took it off Game Pass. So I have to start over <laughs> because I have it free on PlayStation, so I just re-downloaded it on PlayStation, but... They took it off Game Pass, so now I have to restart, and it made me really bad. <laughs> oh, uh, I yeah, I downloaded it, but I haven't started it yet. I'm like, uh, and I need to. I'm like, I understand things are going to rotate off and on on Game Pass, but you really think people care that R- Rhyme isn't like, I don't know, just whatever. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's not a big deal. I know, I know that's what you're signing up for with Game Pass. I was just like, no, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you need something, it's gone. It's yeah. taken away. Yeah, so I've been playing a lot of that. Man, I feel like I've played a lot of nothing. Uh, I've been... I have been playing on Switch, though. I've been playing CrossCode. I've been playing a ton of CrossCode. Just so far from me. I love CrossCode. It's so fun. It is so fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked a lot about it on on Saturday, but it's it's just a top down kind of action RPG in the vein of a lot of people are comparing it to Chrono Trigger. Mm-hmm. I think it's more of like a more of an action based Zelda game, uh, but it is so good. The music's amazing. The art is amazing. The characters are amazing. I, I just love everything about this game. It's it's definitely a front runner for game of the year for me. Uh, and then I've been playing Felseal Arbor's Mark, which is a tactical RPG. Uh, I've been playing some Streets of Rage 4. I've been playing a lot of indie games on Switch, which is really unlike me. I've just been... I don't know. It's just what just what's been speaking to me <laughs> lately, I guess. Uh, so there's that. I've been playing a lot of that. And then I've also been playing uh, a game called RFL, which is a 16-bit RPG, uh, which... I don't know if I think I'm going to finish cross code before I start another one. I just wanted to see what it was mm-hmm. like. It's, it's okay. I mean, I, I'm not very far into it. I just wanted to see what it was like. So that's kind of, it's kind of all I've been playing. I've been playing a lot, a little bit of a lot. So, you know, it's kind of how it happens, I guess. Right. 
just, just dabble yes. in a lot of things until you find something that sticks. <laughs> that's kind. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of how I've been playing games lately, though. It's just like I gotta find something that I'm into because it's just I don't know. I've just been really. I don't know. It's it's been a it's been a long weird weekend, and uh, I, I don't know, man. I've just been kind of out of it lately, and trying to find something that's comforting and sticks is has been a challenge. So. Yeah. Um. Is that all, Corey? Tetris, but yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, for me, um, been playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima. I literally just got to Act Two, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, I need to work on this game, finish it, so I can get this review. Same with Paper Mario. Paper Mario is like, it's such a joy that you kind of don't want the adventure to end, but I'm just like, I gotta put it in this work to get through this game because the writing is so good the gameplay is like easy to get into like and when literally when you figure things out you'd be like okay i know what i need to do now it does have that majora's mass time mechanic where it's just like if i don't get this thing i'm going to die or i'm going to get hit i'm trying to figure this out and it's one of those things that are just like uh why did you pressure me on doing this you know uh but you you get time to like expand and uh and everything to figure stuff out so i'm definitely enjoying that i actually uh put in bayonetta 2 and i had it on easy uh because just wanted to fool around and man i played that all the way through like i had picked up from where i left off and just like decided to play it all the way through and i'm just like i don't care what difficulty this game is on it's still fun. It's like it really is like an all-time classic to me, like a ten ten. Um, and I, of course, I was playing with the pro controller. Uh, but man, I was just like, this was why this game is still so good. Like I don't, and I cannot wait for three. But it was just like, yeah, I was such into the groove of this game that I'm like, I, I'm glad this game came to Switch. Yeah, you know. Like I, I've beaten it on normal switch. I have beaten it like within two days after getting the game coming out. And it's just like I love this game still on on, on this platform. Um uh got it too hot, decided to be like, you know what? It's one of the games that I wanna play, I wanna do get it done, add get my score for the backlog challenge, and then get it off my system. Um man, I thought this was going to be a good game it's okay it's average but i'm like close to the end and the game the frame rate dropped and it's just like wow yeah. this is bad i did it did hob come out for any of the other platforms like when it came out for switch is it on xbox and playstation i think so i just feel like i mean panic button did a great job with the port to switch but it just feels like it's not very optimized it's not and definitely with i i don't know it's the graphic style should be able to work on the system and it does it you know i'm just like why is this not working on the system like i i just wonder i'm like is it was it the was it time and then they not have time to like really optimize it or even patch it or anything it, it just it feels weird because if you like if you look at good job yes that game is simple but i'm like i don't feel like there's no inconsistencies right there and i don't feel like there's no frame rate drops or anything and nintendo may have something to do with that but i'm like hop is like a game that came on the pc um and it should have these problems on Switch for some reason. Um, but it, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to do, like I said, I'm, I'm going to do my best to get to the end part of it, finish it, and then take it off my system. I don't need to see. I don't need to collect everything. I don't need to see a special ending. I just need to get it, get it off my system. Um so I could get back to some other games because um, I was playing also Breath of the Wild, and it's just like, yeah, I need to work. I need to dedicate more time to you, get some more strides, and like finish finish this game up. Um, yeah, let's before, go. It's been like four years. Come on. 
<laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. What three years? Um, I know. Yeah, who's counting? Uh, who's counting? For Xbox, um, play. I'm still playing Okami. I like I said. I'm, Still playing Okami. Uh, just got to get to the last section, um, and then I'll be done with that. I, I'm thinking of jumping onto Dead Space, and I told uh, Jesse that you know I really can't watch your stream because I feel like I need to start this game. Um, even though Mass Effect Two is kind of calling my name, and it's just like uh i need to do this yeah but you, uh, you need to wait for mass effect 2 because we're playing mass effect 1 for book club and then you can just play it after well yeah that is true that way uh, you can just uh i you know well we we have a history at which i actually asked for the day off so i actually am going to have it off um uh just to let everybody know the history of mass effect uh we are doing the series um uh, that we're going to talk about uh we're having a um a episode about that and i took the day off to have that discussion i cannot I, I cannot wait to hear everybody's experience with each game um it's gonna be interesting to see what everybody chose like where people good or for people bad and stuff like i can't wait um and i definitely can't wait for ugh, driving that stupid car in mass effect Ugh. oh it's not that bad i just can't i'm so glad they took it out in part two <laughs> i just couldn't i'm like uh yeah let me hurry up do this kid man can't bang get it up with this stuff um and this time, I definitely will pay attention to Ash. Is it Ashley? Mm-hmm. I will pay attention to her dialogue, because I remember when me, you, and LeBron was talking about it, I was just like, I never paid attention to any of that. I just cared, had her as a character. Like, I didn't know that she was, like, a racist or anything. Yeah, that's, like, her whole storyline. That she's a <laughs> racist. Like, that's, that's, like, the whole... That's, like, the reason the character exists. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I had her killed so I could romance Kino, uh, or the guy, uh, but I don't think I was able to romance him in the first game. Well, if you're a guy, you can't. It There's no gay relationships in Mass Effect uh, 1 unless you are a female and you romance Liara. Oh, but in 2 and 3, they changed all of that. Yeah, which I think whatever this remake or remaster they're doing they'll probably change that mm-hmm. i'm sure i hope so yeah like like i said they could just i'm like y'all yeah, could do andromeda's gunplay like andromeda's like gameplay was fun that that one wasn't bad um but yeah, yeah. add that jetpack uh, oh please do that jetpack is so fun even if they even if they don't like y'all know the fl- how to use flying with anthem Mix that in with this game. Yeah, if, why don't you if, just make a new Mass Effect where you have cool flying suits? Yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's I'm kind of playing jumping on all three platforms and really, um, just really enjoying the time that I have with a lot of gaming. Um, I, like I mentioned, my Joy-Con broke. Uh, my left one broke, which was also drifting. But um, I will be having my new set Friday, so um, I got my red and blue one uh, coming. Um, and I don't know if there's any new games dropping or anything that I need to get. Like, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty much caught up and I'm good. And I just, I mean, the remaster, let's, like the, uh, let's see, August, like the big games for August are like. The Kingdoms of Amalur remaster and the Tony Hawk remaster, I think, comes out at the end of the month. Like, those are kind of... It's remaster season, and Crash 4, I think, is coming out this month, too. But, I mean, there's not a lot oh, big shit. coming out. I think I think we're starting to feel the AAA kind of hit on the COVID stuff, you know? Like, we're going to start mm-hmm. seeing either games are being held for the launch of, of next gen or they're being delayed because of covid like that's how i kind of am seeing it and like the interstitial games are the remakes and the remasters you know like the mafia remaster is coming out soon uh 
Oh, that is right. You know, like I, I'm going to look up this Game Informer because they usually have a pretty good job of breaking down this stuff down. Which, which is now I'm thinking about the Spider-Man. I need to get through Spider-Man on PS4. I just need to get through it. I thought about it, but then I was like, I don't know. I didn't really enjoy it the first time, and I don't really care that much about Spider-Man. That it's just kind of like, why am I doing this? You know? Oh, Battletoads mm-hmm. is coming out this month too. Oh, okay, yeah. Battletoads, I need to get. That's the twentieth. Uh, yeah, that one I do need to get. Uh, Mortal Shell, I think, is it, that Souls like game everybody's excited about. Um, yeah, I'm on a uh, Game Informer too, looking at Fall Guys. Um, yeah, that's out already though. It's but, the free game I, on PlayStation. Um, people are like it. And yeah. I'm just like, uh... It's just another physics-based, I... like, multiplayer dumb game. I mean, it, not dumb, is you know you know what I mean. Like, it's like Human mm-hmm. Fall Flat, or, you know what I mean? Like, those games, so... PJ Tour is coming, Madden's coming, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered, supposedly coming this month. Tell Me Why is coming, the first episode. Project Cars 3, <laughs> Wasteland 3, Windbound is, is coming. Windbound is that but, Wind Waker esque advent uh, Zelda style adventure game that is th- is that the rare no that's not the rare no game. Windbound it's it's an indie game but it looks like Wind Waker yes yes so those are the big games coming this month Kingdoms of Amalur and Tony Hawk are coming out like the same week so that's that's gonna be a fun September I I can't wait for those games everyone's excited for. Uh, Avengers on September 4th and I'm going to be playing Tony Hawk <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I heard that uh, Skater XL is not good <laughs> I heard it's I heard it's like the mechanics and the world is fun but there's nothing to do in it like there's no story there's no missions or anything mm-hmm. which is not great alright ooh Crash got the... pushed October Oh, that makes sense. So, um, I don't know. It's there's there's still a lot coming. I mean, Pikmin in October. November's the big month right now. It's Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, Destiny Two, probably Halo. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a big month. So, I wonder, do we get the next Smash? character announcement next month in september well there's a rumor nintendo direct coming between august 11th and the 22nd 22nd yeah i mean again it's all rumor who knows i might hold off on assassin's creed to be honest with you with destiny and halo coming out that Mm -hmm. week and i know a lot of people are excited for cyberpunk i have for some reason i have like zero interest in cyberpunk i'm just not not into it like i think it looks I'm, cool but like yeah if it was if it was a third person game like the witcher i'd be all about it i just i'm not into these first person rpgs man yeah i mean i i wasn't going to get cyberpunk and i decided to get it because definitely jesse's going to get it LeBron's probably going definitely going to get it and i think i was just like let me be fair to this game and give it a try i think the reason why I wasn't going to pick it up is because none of the gameplay seemed interesting because it didn't it just it still looked like this is all fake CGI stuff that I'm not going to do um, and I want to be sure that if I get this game this is what I am going to do you know um, so I, I, I'm I going I'll pick it up and give it a try um, like I said like, just like you Corey like Beyond Light I want to get because I once again I'm not I might not be a big Destiny fan uh, uh not fan but a player because I, I love the series I think two was like I think two made up for what one lacked um, I think it, two, it, I still think two is a better game than one yeah I, I yeah. there's some things that I liked about one more than I like about two, but overall as an experience, I think two is a much better experience than than one. Uh, two had, I think, two had me hooked with this campaign, and I, I think there was just there was just something about it that just felt good as it flowed. 
you know, as it as it went on uh, with along. I mean, I still have his pro. It still has his problems with me th- that there's not enough various things to do in a sense. But I'm just like I love doing the side missions. I the, I love like the cutscenes and the story that they gave. It's just like it it felt better. You know, mm-hmm. it it kept me glued that I was like after work I was coming back, um, back playing it. I I definitely was talking to you and Jesse about it. Like we were having talks about Destiny, uh, Destiny two. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see Beyond Light. Um, I I think if if it if it if it has a great narrative and what that ice power that they're showing, like if it's really fun, uh with that ice power i'd be like okay you guys got something here um because it's going to be more interesting to me um and i think it's going to bring a lot of people like way back because not too many people were talking about destiny but i think once it drops drops on game pass i think the interest in the talk is going to come back and we see it in headlines and stuff so Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what all I've been getting down. Um, anyone in the chat begin out to any games or anything? Uh, uh, not really. Nobody's. Not I mean, really. there's there's few people in chat. I think few are just watching. I mean, okay. they, if they comment, I'll shout it out. But as of right now, people are just watching. Yes. Well, everybody, that is going to be it for um, for the show. Uh, I thought we were going to talk about stuff. What what else would you like to talk about? I thought we were going to talk about, like, things and stuff. Like what we were talking about in the chat. Well, let's talk about things in the chat. You you don't want to talk about it on the show? Yes, we can. Go ahead. You set it off. I was was just like, you know, things things and stuff. Well, what would you like to discuss? Where should we start off? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I was just surprised that this episode was so short. <laughs> well, it's it's a surprise episode. <laughs> I mean, we we ran through the news. Um, no, I we... I just look. I've been I've been talking to Ed about. Uh, I don't this. This past weekend, I've just been kind of struggling to stay motivated with all this. And, like, you know, it's... it's. I still love to do all this stuff. I just... I want to, like... I feel like we can make the experience better if we just kind of tighten up some things and move in mm-hmm. a direction to where people are enjoying the content more, right? Like... Uh, the other, like, it kind of hit me when, not that I didn't enjoy doing the episode and I love doing it, but, like, our Arsenal X episode was three hours and eight minutes two weeks ago. And it really hit me that it was just kind of like, man, this three-hour episode, now I have to, like, and I'm... (laughs) I know I put all this on me, so I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I'm just working through the process here. Like, okay, you set up for a half hour before the live show, right? Making sure everything's connected. And then when everybody gets on, you have to make sure everybody's camera's in place, which I kind of have it set that way. Uh, yes. As of right now, I do. I need to redo some stuff, but as of right now, that's where it's at. And then, you know, we record... And then I have to transfer over to my editing software, the process video, and then I have to edit the show, which is usually about, I would say, now sometimes I don't do this, but most of the time I I do do it. Like it's, especially if we have guests on, I make sure I edit it to make sure it sounds the best it possibly can. So about 20 to 30 minutes longer than the episode, it takes me to edit an episode. So Mm -hmm. what? three and a half hours to edit the episode and then waiting for it to process. And then I have to upload it and then I have to post it everywhere. And then I have to upload the audio. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a long time to where I put like on, like it's not like this every time I'm just using this as an extreme example, but like a three hour and eight episode, 
eight minute episode takes me what nine or ten hours to to do including like including recording time and then editing time yes. and processing time and like you know you and i were kind of talking about because we want to launch a patreon at some point i think our numbers yes. are strong enough to do that i think we have bonus content worth sharing through a patreon right you know and and i think i think it's worth it uh now will people pay for it i don't know we haven't started it yet so i can't tell you if people will pay for extra content or not because we do so much for free already and that's something mm-hmm. we have to talk about too but i just i think the console specific shows like pow block and arsenal x and potentially crossroads and tower casuals although we're pretty we're pretty uh quick on tower casuals it's usually only about 40 minutes an episode mm-hmm. but you know, if we could if we could tighten up the console specific shows, not to forty minutes, but you know, like hovering around an hour, you know. And you know, I was talking to you, like the 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 feedback that the episode that you and Celeste did by you know, without me that week. Yes. You got so much positive feedback. And, you know, the episode that I did with her got similar feedback, but not as not as great as your guys' episode was to the point where I'm like, well, if we're going to start moving forward, I, I would like to be a hundred percent honest. I would like to not be on every show every week. Like I, I, I'm, I just, you know, I think we're big enough to where we could cover that, you know? And, and I feel like the, the show I have to be on is tower casual. So there's one and I can be on like one, maybe two other shows a week. Like, Okay, but I don't I don't want to be doing five shows a week. You know, that's a lot. And and it is true. I mean, it's a lot for anybody, it, but at this at, like, you know, cuz cuz like Boss Rush, like this podcast, there's a, there's always a rotation, mm-hmm. you know, and I I never have a problem hosting it. Like if I can't make it, maybe you could step in or host it. And you guys talk mm-hmm. about cuz cuz we we're planning that with me with me being gone, uh, me me and Celeste and our guests were doing either Fritch, you Jesse and Laron could do pot could do pot rush. I mean pot rush, boss rush, and then that following week I'll be gone on vacation. Uh, you guys could host it again, but I'm like, if you need to take a, some time away, then take some time away and let uh, let. An out host. I have no problem doing that. You know, I'm always up to filling in where you can't do it. So if you can't make AX, me and Jesse can record at night when I get home. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're fe- feeling tired, you know, I my expectations for you is just like yes, Tower Casual and Boss Rush. If you feel like you need to do it, definitely Power Block. Like I like. If you want to be on Power well, Block, see, or but make that, Power see, Block, that's that, that's, that what I'm, that's what I'm getting at, though. Is like that still puts me okay. on every show. That's like that right there just puts puts me on every show. And like I don't like I love doing every show, right? But like mm-hmm. if if we're doing like if we're pre recording one v ones, right? Sometimes I'm recording six, seven, eight episodes a week. You know, just yeah, and I'm. Look, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, and I know it does. I'm just, I, as as you need a as, break as the as the person who like who is really only the one technically capable of recording, putting the live shows on, editing the shows, and uploading the shows. And I know you said you want to help, and I I do appreciate that. And we'll talk about that at some point. You know, just getting software and trying to f- figure out. You know, if if the intros and outros I have set up are compatible with the software that you have, which I don't see why not. I just have to learn how to use the software that you're using so we can walk through it together. But like, as of right now, like editing all the shows, making sure they're uploaded and tagged correctly, and then posting them to the website and posting them on like, that's, that's another almost full-time job at that point. And yes, I can't like as somebody who can't really record until after at the earliest eight thirty mm-hmm. at night on weekdays and like on the weekends, like yeah, the weekends are a little bit I can stay up later, you know. But like 
I would like to be in bed by midnight because I have to get up at five to five thirty for my yes for my job, you know, and it's it's just becoming a lot to the point where I was telling you like I don't have time to play games, you know, to be <laughs> because of all this, and I don't have time to, you know, do well, the it, thing that I love to talk about because this is this boss rush games is all about talking about the games we're playing and how much fun we're having with them. But I can't, I can't play the games to then talk about them. So like, and to the point where it's like, I just, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. You know what I mean? Like it's, Mm. that's, that's where I'm at here. And like what I, what I'm trying to open up the conversation to is like, maybe you and like, I, I don't have a problem producing the shows at night. Right. But, like, I want to be able to multitask, you know, like, yeah, I can produce the live show. If you and Celeste host a live live Nintendo Power Block, right? Yes, I can produce it, but I'll be on the other screen trying to finish up a book club game or making sure assets for the next show are ready or getting stuff ready to post for when the show posts instead of having to do it afterwards or something. You know what I mean? Like, or yeah, like a boss rush podcast during the day i can produce it but if my wife and i want to have you know lunch together or something i'll be able to produce it the live show and then you got like you'll just text me when you're done or i can come in and check on it periodically you know what i mean like just little things like that to kind of take some of the pressure of being and the addition of leron and celeste have like really (laughs) eased the tension you know because like, yes. I know that you only know about like the last week or so of how I've been feeling, but I've kind of been feeling like this for a, a while, you know. And and I miss uh, I miss the days where like, not that I don't think what we're doing is important, and like I don't want to cancel shows or anything, but I do miss the days where we would all like it was just you, me, and Jesse, like, or you, me, and a guest, or whatever. And this look, this is before Celeste and Leron were even the picture. I don't mean to like th- 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 to that sense, but I mean like, yeah, I really miss the days where we would come together and talk about games for like two hours on one show and then move on. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Yes. And I've just been feeling really down about this recently in a in a personal way, you know and. It was to the point where, like, do I really need to be doing all this anymore? Is it really worth it? Is it worth staying up late and drinking, like, 45 energy drinks the next day to, <laughs> you know, I am I mean, I'm serious. Like, I, yeah. the consumption of energy drinks has gone up insanely, an insane amount the last few, <laughs> like, couple, really month and a half or so. Uh, like, I've, I've gained some weight because I'm trying to keep that sugar level high so i can focus on editing or posting and stuff and it's it's become kind of unhealthy <laughs> you know <laughs> well it's it's i i, I know we've been talking about it because i definitely do like you've been tired and you know you you taking a break taking that time off and everything it's just like you feel like it be energized you like it but you, it, you felt it, good it really didn't though because like I still had to edit all the shows, you know, I Mm -hmm. had, I still was on two shows that week. I, you know what I mean? Like I still did the work. Oh, because of AX. Yeah. And I still did the work that week. I just wasn't on a couple of the shows and you guys recorded a 1v1, uh, which was really good. I edited it. It was really good with, uh, with David and his Zelda stuff was really, really awesome. I hope people check that out and I hope people check Mm -hmm. out his work and stuff. It's really cool an era without a hero is is what it's called it's really it's really neat so um please check that out but you know what i mean like i was i took the week off to do the work at a reasonable time (laughs) and not you know what i mean it's yeah i don't really know how to explain how i i'm feeling because it's it's not like it's not like i I, I, want to quit doing this because i love what we're doing and i think that the direction that we've been moving in in terms of just don't want you just don't want to be feel burned out 
and because it, it gets to a point where you feel like you're burning out and it feels like that burnout is taken away from your creativity or even you just spend the time doing other things you yeah know? and i think that i think the creative part too is a big deal to me too mm-hmm. now because like i haven't really done anything creative in this space in a while you know i mean i've yeah. the podcasts and stuff are their own kind of creative thing but the way I edit them and everything is so kind of copy paste at this point to cut down on time that it doesn't really feel creative. It just feels like I'm making the show and then I haven't done anything really extra creative. You know what I mean? And I get into the, I get into the apology mode because it's just like, I should be helping you know and and i i wish i i'm like i really do wish i could do more to help you so that you don't feel the way that you feel at times i know but the, I, the way you're helping is by hosting the shows and getting some of the shows ready and that kind of thing it helps immensely you know like josh has mm-hmm. been getting tower casuals ready every week and that's been extremely helpful in a busy week you know and and you hosting this show and uh it helps a lot with with a lot of that and i just what i would really you know if if we talked about kind of breaking everybody up into teams right like Mm -hmm. in term not like just like splitting everybody off but like just having teams where okay maybe you and celeste are the nintendo team now and jesse and i move to the xbox team and like try to curate that podcast and that content and make it there because like I point out Nintendo Power Block, as much as I love that show, as much as I love hosting that show, if if people love that direction that you and Celeste took it, which was an amazing episode, by the way, I'm, I'm not the only one. I mean, the audience isn't the only one that thinks this. I thought that was a great episode. It was such a different, fresh take on Nintendo on the Nintendo podcast, right? Like, I, I loved it. And if that's the direction that we need to go to, to make nintendo power block successful even more Mm -hmm. successful and boss rush games more successful and feel more fresh moving forward then i will consider doing that like i have no problem with you and celeste doing that because i love that episode now don't get me wrong still pop in i want to be i want to talk nintendo and stuff yeah and you know i love you and i i love talking to celeste and everything but like just until we figure out what this Patreon we're doing and figure out what Boss Rush Games is going to be moving forward. Because I feel like we've tried a lot of different things, right? Like, we've we've tried doing supplemental YouTube stuff, and then we run out of mm-hmm. time, and then we don't get to do the retro game show anymore because our episodes are too long, and we talk too much before and after the show to get a decent recording out of the retro game show or yes you know when we have a three hour long episode of arsenal x there's no way we're going to record two or three episodes of what's this on game pass you know um and that sucks because i want to do those things so we talked about tightening up the episodes and i kind of want to tighten up like if we'd have like a pre-show before the main show you know where we kind of bs and talk about other things and maybe that's where like a the the snack cast comes in before nintendo power block you know maybe like the patreon stuff no not even that Um, like if we do live show right like like Mm -hmm. if we do the live show the pre-show that you won't be able to get on the audio version you come to our twitch channel and watch the pre-show at 8 45 or 7 45 central whatever and you hear 15 minutes of like talking snacks or whatever you know what i mean that kind of thing and then we do like a 45 or not a 45 like a 50 to 65 70 minute episode of pow block maybe we eliminate some sections of the show maybe we reconstruct parts of the show to make it more efficient but still fun you know what i mean that kind of stuff and maybe the boss rush podcast is where we all kind of come together to talk about what we've been playing. And yeah, if there's a major news thing to talk about, we'll talk about it, but maybe, maybe 
it, I guess if you're comparing it to other podcasts, like Arsenal X becomes more like Unlocked and Power Lock becomes more like Friend Code or NVC. And then Boss Rush is more like the Game Informer show or Min Max, where we answer the questions, where we have randomized topics to talk about, where we talk mm-hmm. about what we've been playing that week. You know what I mean? Like, that's... yeah. That's kind of the, where the, I, changing the format, like yeah, you said. Yeah, and I I think that would work better for everyone because like I would really love to see you and Celeste play the original Legend of Zelda for the retro game show. Like I would love to produce that episode. Mm-hmm. I would love to uh do some like Jesse and I kind of do some weird things on what's this on Game Pass or record an episode from an, the bow of the ship of Sea of Thieves. Like, I would love to do little experiments like that, but the way the shows are structured right now and just kind of... I still want them to be f- like kind of free form like they are, but like the way they're structured now, they're just... It's too free form and all the shows are too ballooned out to where I feel like the mm. console based shows we tighten up we 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 just tighten them up and uh because like looking at analytics that 3 hour episode of Arsenal X only about 37% of the people who downloaded the episode or listened to the episode finished the episode you know and that's not that's not great you know I, People people usually start stop losing interest around an hour and a half. I've noticed on our okay. shows. It doesn't matter like it doesn't matter how long they are. You know, people start losing interest at an hour and a half, and it's it's even worse on YouTube where people will stick around for maybe fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and bounce out. Which I don't. I the the video podcasts are there for people who enjoy video podcasts. It's not really something that we're like banking on, you know, it's the extra yes. curricular stuff that we want to show. And like, we didn't even do our summer indie masterclass this year because we don't that have time. Right. We didn't have any time. We just didn't, we didn't have the time. We, we planned it, but we just didn't execute it. Yeah. And it, that makes me sad because indie master it well indie showcase used to be one of our big things that we did every year. That yeah. was like that was like the fun thing we did every summer was in between you know pod and play seasons we did indie master class, and we didn't get to do it this year. And I I was thinking about that this weekend. I was like, we didn't do that this year, and it makes me really sad. And like, it's not to say that we don't we can't do that now, but like. That's just like our summer thing, you know, and yeah, it just, it, it upset me, you know, it's, it's upsetting to, to have all these well, ideas can, and things. Can I, can I ask you how many shows do you want to be on? So Tower Casual, I don't. So my, my, cause my assumption is Tower Casual. I mean, I don't, AX. I'm going to, I'm going to just throw this out here. I don't really count Tower Casuals as a show because it's so short. We start mm-hmm. we start at eight forty five and I'm in bed by nine thirty. Right? Like I don't really count Tower Casuals as like a real show. It is it is a real show, but it's not structured like our other shows and we're so in and out. And mm-hmm. I kinda wish our shows like Pow Block and Arsenal X were structured like Tower Casuals. Like we are we're in there, we're talking about the news, we're talking about uh, you know, we have a question, maybe we play a game or do something interesting at the end of the show and then we bounce out, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't need to talk about what I've been playing on every single podcast. Cause like if people listen to all of our podcasts, they don't care what we're playing every podcast. You know, that's where boss rush kind of comes in or an expansion pack comes in, which would be a Patreon exclusive show would be the expansion pack. Or, you know, if standard definition comes back, I would really love to do standard definition again. That was the one show that like when we started doing these extra things like one V one and standard definition, standard definition was the show that I was like, okay, it's time. We can finally do this. We can finally do the show I've been wanting to do for years. And we got three episodes in and now, now we don't have it anymore because we ran out of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I'm not, I hope I'm not coming off as negative on anybody. I'm not blaming anybody. No. I'm not like trying to like I'm not trying to sound mean and say that not everybody's doing 
a good job because everybody's doing a great job. Our numbers are way up. People love the personalities. People, people, our numbers are higher than they've ever been. You know, even Tower Casuals is building an audience quickly, which is really nice to see. It's it's just that you don't want to stress yourself too thin because you ha- you have a lo- well, enough on your it, plate being on the shows and editing and stuff, you know. And well, did you, if we and, and it's, well, it's, it's, oh go ahead oh well like an average episode of Nintendo Power Block is like an hour and forty five minutes. If we could cut that forty five minutes off, mm-hmm. you know, and just cut it down to an hour and be really like into the episode, like. I wouldn't mind being on every show. It's just like if if like the that it's it's like Tower Casuals is is forty five minutes. Okay, that's that's fine. If there's a one v one, that's another ninety minutes. You know, and sometimes there's two, and 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 that's you know be, between the two of us or three of us or whoever's interviewing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which. We're going to do an updated, Ed and I are going to do maybe a two-part update on our 1v1s uh, coming soon, because I want to start, I kind of want to see where everybody's at, you know, just, I kind of want to do that periodically, you know, either us to uh, us or Jesse, or I want to, I, I kind of want to see where Celeste and Laurent are at, at this point, even though we just did theirs, um, but where, where was I going? Oh, the one v ones. Pow block is like two hours sometimes. If you include the BS beforehand, talking mm-hmm. afterwards, that kind of thing. Sometimes two and a half hours. Boss rush is an hour and a half to two hours, which I want that show and, to be long. I want boss and, rush to be long. And I'm I'm guilty of getting off a of topic and bringing things up in. And no, that's... you aren't. <laughs> but but I think. Like I said, the thing I think with me is just like I I'm so into discussion, I'm so into creativity, I'm so passionate about stuff that I will argue stuff to death, to death and I think it's I'll keep blaming it on me and in the area and stuff. That's and, one thing. And, that's one thing too. Not to cut you off, but that's one thing too no. that I think we need to be mindful of is not talking each other in circles because we do do that sometimes where and i and i'm that's why i said i'm so guilty and i i don't know how i get into it and i think it's because of and i think i'm telling you and lorana and jesse this and it was celeste it's just like i had no one to talk about video games with all all like most of my life and talking to the talking stuff with you guys about this just like it puts me into a zone that i I get into such a, a zone of having a good. I feel like I'm having a good conversation, and I'm I'm learning stuff that I just don't want to let it go because I haven't had stuff like this. And I gotta I gotta fo- I I need to focus more. Tell myself, you know, I need to cut this in conversation. I need to cut it down, and I need to move on. And that needs to be on me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, uh, and, and it, it's. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. And and it's nobody's fault because everybody like like you like I didn't really talk a lot about video games to my friends until recently. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. recently. I mean, like within the last ten years. But you know what I mean. Like I didn't have that group of friends who just played video games. You know, like I had one friend who I saw like maybe once a week, and we would play his Super Nintendo or whatever, and that was kind of it. And I get it. That's why we're doing this now because we love to talk about games. That's why we have so many mm-hmm. shows. Uh, but at the same time, I think we need to start curating what we talk about and kind of sectioning it off into these different shows and make sure we're kind of, you know, I've gone back and forth on, you know, what shows should be conversational and what shows should be news shows. And then like, what do all the shows want to be conversational or, Mm -hmm. you know, do we want to structure the shows that way? And I'm like, we can probably do a little bit of both as long as we just tighten it up. I, I yeah, I guess sometimes I feel like I just don't want to be like everybody else's podcast. No, and that's news. That's what that's where we gotta like kind of sit down and talk about it. because like I don't want to be like everybody else either, right? I think mm. there's a way to talk like for Nintendo Power Block, for example. I think there's a way to discuss what's happening 
on Nintendo's consoles or in the world of Nintendo. Yes. Without making it a checklist type show. Because that's the show I don't want to be as a checklist type show. Right. But I still want to have conversation. Like, I want to have, like, if you pick two or three news stories to talk about in an episode, it doesn't have to mm. be everything, ev- like, it doesn't have to be every single article on Nintendo li- that showed up on Nintendo Life or IGN that week, right? Like, yes. you just pick two or three major things that happened that week. And we just have a conversation about them. You know, Jesse's been arguing this point on, on Arsenal X for a long time. And I agree with him. It's just that like, I don't have, I haven't had time to like sit down and really <laughs> kind of you just, like just consume the news before I start the show, you know? And that's why I put the links in the, in the article, but like, it's just, you know, I, 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 and I think that's why it's, like when oh he froze i didn't freeze i'm good i'm here oh oh the, the skype froze on me um well, i think stupid. that's why <laughs> i think that's why i take the time i think when i'm off work or when i get off work try to catch up on the gaming news and see what's going on so if people mention it to me i'm like well i already knew that like and I, and I and I guess it's, I guess I make it a mission or I, I just put it in my mind to be like check the game of news to see what is happening and if there's nothing big happening there is a discussion that can be had out of the blue and stuff and I think that's why I've been trying I, I definitely as a host and definitely just even as a co-host and you know podcast I'm like I got to limit myself because I know I could drag on the conversation too long that's not needed or that's not even regulated to what the topic was I'm super guilty of that and I need to definitely fix that to keep the stuff to keep the I know with I know with boss rush I'm just like okay my limit is to 230 because I got to be at work so mm-hmm. knowing that I know and definitely knowing that you guys if you guys got something to do I have to be mindful to be like I got to get this moving because you guys got things to do and I got things to do I think with, with definitely with power block and they're probably with AX and stuff um and crossroads if that ever happens it's just like I gotta be my. I I have to be mindful that if if this feels too long, agree and move on. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and so I mean, I mean that's kind of what this, I guess, bonus episode. But really, then this episode is it's just you and me because, I mean, we're the ones that spend the most time on this, right? And and mm-hmm. no, I mean, I'm not trying to count Jesse out or anything. I. It, no. it's just it, it, i i mean he knows like his his schedule is so different from ours that yeah he like his the only time he gets to work on this is the weekends you know when we record stuff and uh i just because you and i have been podcasting together for so long and we want this to be something special and something that and which it already is but we want it to be something that people will look back on, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now and look at this YouTube channel that we've done, whether we're still doing it or not, you know, yes. I mean, knock on wood, like nothing happens to any of us, but people look back on it and said, that group did something unique. That group did something interesting. You know, they stood for something. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I want people to say that about us and that, yes. and you know, whatever content we decide to put out on YouTube and podcasts and live shows. Like I would like to have some sort of team meeting to, to explore those avenues. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't do live shows anymore just to make sure the podcasts are the best podcasts we possibly can. If we need to section off boss rush to make it a longer form podcast, like, like one of my favorite shows is the game informer show, but they, they don't record their whole show at, one time right they record like sometimes they record three or four different times during the week with different hosts and i think that would be okay for our boss rush podcast you know what i mean like if we don't record the whole thing on saturday like if you celeste and Leron have a night off that you want to record like record questions or 
a topic or you know and then on saturday when we record we'll talk about what we've been playing or so like one kind of vague news item or one topic you know what i mean like yeah i think that might work for us uh and then once you look at our console shows that's where we kind of tighten it up and and have conversations about news things and maybe we skip what we've been playing and keep that solely for boss rush you know or you know easy allies has a show called frame trap where that's literally the show where they talk about what they've been playing the whole time and that's all they talk about on that show is what they've been playing you know i don't think we're we're gonna go that far but yeah you know what i mean and if i mean if you have any ideas i'm just kind of rambling and talking about what's been on my mind the last two weeks no it's just um like i agree with you like my thing is like i've been sent telling you in the chat just like whatever you need me to do i'm willing to do because i want to help in any form and fashion if we need to change some stuff we could change it like i'm not i'm not a fear i'm not afraid of change i'm I rather, if it's for the best, then let's do it. Let's roll. My my thing is, as long as I get to do it with you guys, as long as we're having fun, and as long as you're not stressed out about it, like it's not going to be a burden to you. I'm literally all for it. You know, I, like I said, I'm here for the team. Like I want to do. I want to do as much as I can with the team and, and stuff because I'm just I, I I literally like I when I called you or when I talked to you it was just like if like if I if if I ever did something to offend the team or if I ever if it caused me to leave the team I would literally feel bad about it because it's just like I feel like I let everybody down. You know, and I I keep that in mind. Like I don't want to let the team down. So whatever, whatever we do, and whatever changes that we need to do, get on me if I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, and and kick me in the tail or something so that I can do it because I'm just like I'm having too much fun with everybody, and I I enjoy everything that we do. Yes, we do talk about a lot of food. We we talk a lot about a lot of games, some wackiness. My opinions are maybe out there and stuff, but I'm just like I love having this discussions because it gets everybody in, you know. And I and if we need to go to teams, then let's do teams. Let's ride with teams. If if that is making a lot of people listen to us more and people are enjoying the content that way, then let's do it. Yeah. You know, I, I t- my thing is about you. It's just like, I don't want you to be feeling stressed out, feeling down and out. And like, if this eases the work up on you, then let's do it. Like, I watched the pop block where I posted something, <laughs> you took it down, uh, and or the one that I spelled the word wrong. <laughs> I don't know which one is. Like, what did I spell wrong? <laughs> I was just watching the video, like, what did I do wrong? Oh, but, we were talking about, oh, Oh, your book club vis- <laughs> video for control. Uh, that's what we were talking about. I was like, ah, man, gotta like, edit that. <laughs> like, did I do something wrong? Well, like, and you, I didn't. It's, I didn't it's, realize it, it. You, you should have put Boss Rush Games presents, and you put present, like, <laughs> like a gift. <laughs> you know, ah, uh. and. Like, I mean, it was a small thing, but like, it was very noticeable because you use that big, bold font. And I was like, oh, geez, this is like the first thing somebody's going to want. Oh, I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry, everybody. I need to go back to school, get my grammar together. Oh, but it's, I I guess I would just like when I did that and when I do stuff like that and I try to put it on Boss Rush, it's not up to stuff. I apologize. That's why I need better software uh, and stuff. It's a learn because I, like I said, I don't want you to feel like everything should be thrown on you. And and if if it feels like what stuff happened on in the past, that's what I don't want want you to go through and stuff. You know, I I want to. I want to help and hopefully I think everybody on the team just like we want to do all do our part to make this easier uh, for everybody else and definitely for you and stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, 
but like on it like to, i think just tidying up the shows will take so much time off of editing stuff you know and just being able to do that extra stuff is is the thing th- those are the things i want to do you know i want to get back to the retro game show i want to get back to indie masterclass like what i was throwing around was like okay maybe every other week because i would like to keep in the indie masterclass stuff going but like Mm -hmm. maybe every other week we record two or three episodes of the retro game show and then the next week we'll do we'll play through an indie game like indie masterclass you know what i mean and post post those on youtube accordingly that way like we're kind of killing two birds with one stone but to do that, we have to tighten up Nintendo Power Block so we can start the retro game show. Let's say, so if we're doing it Eastern time, if we start Nintendo Power Block, the pre-show at 8.45, and the regular show at 9, be done by 10, we can record the retro game show two half-hour episodes or three half-hour episodes afterwards. You know what I mean? And be done by 11.30, and then the next day, I'll edit the, edit it all, you know? I think Ed froze. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Do you heard me though, right? Like, it just yes. Like, that's that's where like, I feel like if I'm going to spend three and a half hours editing, I should be editing three or four things, not just one. You know what I mean? That's that's kind of what I'm getting at, and that's why I've been so kind of frustrated and consumed because then i could edit and then on my monitor over here i can play something while things are processing processing or while i'm listening to an episode uh to edit some of the chunks out you know what i mean like that's Mm. that's where i'm getting at so i mean uh, and then well then we just like i said let's get let's work together let's but like I would, and... I would really like okay. to get everybody's opinion. You know, like I would like to have yeah. a team meeting with all five, six, seven of us. You know, and I mean, I would love to add a PlayStation show. And I know a lot of people have were excited about Laron, right, coming on. But like, I'm not gonna force a PlayStation show onto him. You know. Yes. I'm just. I, I want him to be comfortable with what he's doing. And you know what I mean? And I know he's got other things going on. Would I love for him to host a PlayStation show? Yes. Why? Multiple reasons. One, he's a great personality and he's got really high energy and he's, he's, yes. he's got the passion for, for games at least. Right. And, and that's some, that's a place where we're severely lacking is PlayStation, especially the PlayStation exclusives. I know that you played the last of us and you reviewed it. And I know, that we play on PlayStation occasionally, but our kind of main and, system is Switch slash Xbox, where his and, and, well, his his specialties are the opposite. That's PlayStation and PC, which are two things that PC. we are sorely and, lacking. And and definitely the thing I will say about PlayStation, can, can I uh, if I can address this? I'm not sorry, everybody. Is that I try to find news and stuff on PlayStation, and it in and, and I, it's really hard to do that. And you know, and I don't, and I'm not trying to say, uh, bring PlayStation or anything down. It's just that when you're trying to have a con- conversation about PlayStation, if if there's not a lot of conversation there on that system due to us not playing it a lot, or there's barely any news for it, it gets really hard to talk about it. I'm like, because you, I'm like, what is there really to talk about with PlayStation? I, of course, they're first party, but like, if we talk about third party indie games, that could be on Microsoft or that could be on uh on switch and stuff and if sony is not producing a lot of indie games and stuff what else is there to talk about you know i can't be the only one playing god of war and not be able to talk it talk about well, it if no one else is playing it or i mean there, there are certain games on playstation i will definitely play horizons one of them mm-hmm. i'll probably check out miles morales at some point i will probably i will definitely play horizon that's the game that's going to get me to buy a playstation yeah. 5 right like I'll play these games and Kenna, I hope I would like, I'm honestly debating on whether or not I should get a PlayStation five first because Halo infinite's going to be on 
Xbox One X for now. And anything else that I'm interested in playing is kind of further out. Right. And I and I I put on there was a there was a uh, a poll that was going on, would you get a PlayStation five or a Series X first? And yes, I did say I would get a Series X first, but everything because of how strong that showcase was the PlayStation Five, I would definitely get a PlayStation Five and whatever those games drops, I'm definitely gonna get like it's it's I think we had a good conversation about PlayStation 5 in this showcase that we did, that you guys probably did with the Microsoft one. I think the Microsoft one was really strong, but that Sony one was really good. That I mean, like, literally really good. You know, and that was what when you don't get a lot of news and stuff or, like, even a build-up, when you come on that strong, it makes up for all that time that was missed. You know, and so if we decide to talk about PlayStation, and hopefully we do, I want I want to talk more about PlayStation. I know I've been negative about PlayStation in the past because of Nintendo and Microsoft, but Sony do have some good stuff, has some amazing stuff going for it. It's just hard to talk about it when it's hard to talk about it when no one really critiques on it and really like. Some sometimes pull out some of the cons and talk about it. It's really hard to do it if we just all agree on it, agree on some pro stuff about Sony and then move on. I mean, that doesn't make a fun conversation. I I do it on Power Block and I do it on on AX sometimes. I do critique critique and I do bring out some cons. And sometimes if it feels like I'm ne- being negative, it's not my intention. But I'm just like, you got to. You got to make sure that if you're going to do this, you got to talk about this and you got to be aware of it. And if I can't be aware of stuff with PlayStation, it's hard to make that conversation happen. Um, but I want to be, I do want to do a PlayStation podcast and not uh, with Leron, um and talk about P- PS4 and whatever is coming next. Because I think if as a podcaster and a universal gamer who who loves games just in general on any platform, I have to be able to talk about that in a good light and a bad light. You know, I gotta have that balance and stuff. And and that's just and that's just me. No one else has to have that balance, but that's just me. I know a lot of people, like you said, <laughs> even though my opinions may be wrong, it's good that I have an opinion. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I and I, I know that, and that's why. Like, if there was ever a PlayStation show, I'm you, uh, like, you, I don't think I would be the right person to be on it, and I don't think Jesse would be the right person to be on it. Mm-hmm. I would love to. I mean, I would love to talk PlayStation. I just don't play the exclusives enough to really, because like, I I didn't play The Last of Us Part Two. Right, because it just it that game does not interest me in, in the slightest, and I know I'm in the way small minority of that, but like, just doesn't interest me in the slightest. So like, I don't know if I would be the right person to be talking about PlayStation because mm-hmm. there's very few exclusives that that garner my interest. You know, God of War, The Order, Horizon. I mean, Final Fantasy VII remake does but i'm waiting for the xbox version um right i'm well, i'm trying really hard although it's 35 dollars on playstation right now and i i i still not worth it to me i'm sorry uh, i just can't no. I, I, but i mean I, to to to, yeah. to to be like if if Laron decided to you know volunteer to lead the playstation podcast and that team like I would totally be okay with both of you doing the PlayStation show with like a guest every week or something, you know, and I'd be more than yes. happy to produce the live show of that and chime in, chime in every once in a while, you know what I mean? But like for me, just to get back to what kind of like I was, I've been thinking about is like, I'm more than happy to produce every show, every live show that we do and everything. I just need to be able to multitask at some things and maybe not appear as like a real host on the shows. And if there's something that I can chime in on, then I will do it, you know, but like, 
producing and editing are two things that I need to be able to multitask at or play a book club game while we're recording Mm -hmm. or you know what, you know what I mean? Like I need to be able to multitask and me doing four five, six shows a week. I can't, I can't, I feel like I'm doing our shows a disservice by being tired and not being able to get some of the stuff done. And I've wanted to put, get these animated backgrounds up for so long and I just can't cause I haven't had the time to sit down and figure it out. You know what I mean? And yeah. And it's not just figuring it out. It's just setting it up and taking the hour, hour and a half it would take to just do it, you know? And so those are the types of things that I've been really thinking about and that and like our Patreon stuff that we want to do. And, you know, we can talk about that off line but you know that's that is something that we've been considering doing for a while and we were talking about it before this whole pandemic started and then we decided that like oh well maybe launching one when everybody doesn't have any money is probably a terrible yeah. idea uh especially because i'm assuming we are not going to be the biggest patreon ever when we launch it so um you know plus i still have to get some things registered and trademarked and stuff because i've been putting that off as well so uh, but you know, I, I love what we're doing. I love this. You know, I, I, when, and I know people know the story, but I'm going to tell it again. When, when nerds gone rogue ended, I was devastated. And honestly, you were like really the only reason why I kept doing this. And then as we kept going this stuff started exciting me again and I don't want that feeling to go away and we're doing so much and trying to do, do so many things that like the last probably month and a half, really it it started that excitement started to fade and it just, I don't want that to happen. And I, I, you know, not, not to sound like a, a, uh, selfish kind of idiot but like boss rush should be bigger than me it should be bigger than you it should be bigger than all of us it should be this network we have interchangeable parts to do the job that is that is you know that we see fit and Mm -hmm. you know if you have to miss an episode we have people that can cover you know if jesse has to miss we can cover you know what i mean like we have that ability to do that especially with the addition of Celeste and, and Laron, like now our pool to pull from is even bigger. And, you know, now that Josh is, you know, partially on board and all the people that we've met doing this, we can have guests on, like there's so many different ways that we can kind of pull from if somebody needs to miss. And like, that's kind of where I'm at now. It's like, I want to be the producer and like hosting some of the shows and be able to multitask and produce the show the way that I would like them to be produced instead of just having the generic background up and hoping the online, like the live show doesn't fail halfway through. <laughs> um, yeah. Which it, it has before <laughs> several times. Uh, but that's just, it's that, it, just kind of me venting in like the open air and, and I hope people understand. And I know people that stream or do podcasts and stuff understand. And I, I still get messages saying that we're crazy for doing not one, not two, but five podcasts, you know? And, and like, and, and that's why I said, like, I don't want you to stress yourself out. Like if you need to fall back for a week or you just need to fall back for, for some shows, do it. Like, like you said that you, we got coverage. Like, I'm all up for whatever needs to be done. So if you do need to fall back and just do AX or Antara Casual, do it. If you can't, you know, like you don't have to be on Power Block all the time. You don't have to be on Boss Rush or or Crossplay or or like even AX. Like if you are tired, I could when I get off of work, I could record with Jesse and let's run and have an AX show. And, and have fun. Now I can't do Tower Schedule. I apologize for that. No, and that's like no, that's <laughs> that's 
<laughs> what's to be something else? He'd be like, yeah. Well, that's talking about that's like the like I said, like Monday nights. I don't really count that as like a a, a real show, even though it is. You know what I mean? Like because it's so s- short and small and mm-hmm. concise, and we're in and out in forty minutes, and I can edit that show in forty five minutes, and it'd be done. You know what I mean? Like it's that's. It's everything else that takes like two or three hours to do, and then you know what I mean. It's and and I know now we're talking in circles, which is exactly what we brought up that we wanted to avoid. Yeah, just, but, yeah. But you know, just to kind of wrap up this thing, I want to be able to produ- produce the best shows that we possibly can. I want to be the producer. I want to be the person that makes sure the graphics are right and the anime when the animated backgrounds are in like they're running correctly i want to make sure everybody's audio levels are correct i want to ma- you know what i mean i want to be that guy i want to be the like i want to be the 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 producer i want to be the side host for when mm-hmm. you know and even even for nintendo power block which is a show you and i started like i would like to be the producer of that show too you know I I think the last few weeks have shown that you and Celeste can make that show something special. What you know, we started it and I'm still going to produce it and be a part of it and you know, we'll we'll talk about what's going to happen with it, but like if 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 we decide, you know, you and Celeste are going to be the Nintendo team or whatever, you know, like Maybe that's an avenue we explore. Podcasts change hosts all the time, you know. Like, and and like I said, I don't want to do this without you. I don't want to do Nintendo Power Block without you. But at the same time, like if if that's going to better the show and I can produce it, I'll you know mm-hmm. we'll still be doing it together. It'll just be a different way, you know. And and that and that may be my worry. It's just like doing shows without you because it's like not being able to ha- hear you chime in to stuff maybe that's probably what my worry it's just like i'm so used well, to us like you said podcasting well like i said too like if we t- if we can tighten up these shows you know like the if we can tighten up pow block and get those retro game shows in or indie showcase mm-hmm. shows in if we can get those in like maybe nothing will change as if we tighten it up but if if you know this is this is something i think we could talk about off air and and whatever but these are just ideas that i've been floating around especially as we get closer to getting content out there for patreon and yeah and talking about how we want to evolve our youtube content and how we evolve our live shows so yeah well, sorry, Aaron that Fred- was that was a long, <laughs> long kind of we, segment. We, trust me, we have done this many a time, Corey. <laughs> it's nothing new. I know. Uh, I just, what, you know, what, you, I, can I, can I, can I ask you? Do you feel better now, venting, like saying, speaking your, like speaking your piece? I would say, do you feel better? I, I feel more optimistic than I did <laughs> this weekend because I mean, this weekend I was just like. Man, there were times where I was just like, I just want to throw everything away and just not do any of it anymore. But the, I knew that wasn't true in my mind. I just felt some, I don't know, there's there's like once a year where I just kind of have a week where I just feel lost. I mean, not even just, not even lost. Just like, I just don't know what to do, you know, and... and I, I know that things can always be better and get better. And I just, I don't know. This weekend was just kind of mentally rough for me for, for no reason really than just me being in my own head and thinking about a lot of things. Uh, but I feel better and more optimistic. I would like to kind of talk about more of this stuff off air because like mm-hmm. I do have some ideas that I would like to try to do 
and maybe we'll test it out for a couple weeks and see what happens. But yeah, I mean, I feel yeah. feel better than I did. I I'm like I said, I'll be better by Saturday. I'll feel fine, and I it, it'll be like none of this even ever happened. But I do have notes written down of things I want to explore and try to do and all that stuff. So. All right. Well, everybody, that is going to be Boss Rush Podcast. Thank you guys for watching, tuning in, chiming in. Um, you know, Corey, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at I am Corey in HD and Instagram and yeah. Yeah. Right you guys could you guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code. Check out Option Opinion on SoundCloud. I will be getting new episodes up with that. Um, and yeah, just uh, we love you guys. Uh, we do this for for everybody. Um, you know who are into games or who just want to listen to a podcast or about games and stuff. Who who feel like. These guys talk a lot about stuff and I'm into it. Or who just want to be like, oh, that's cool. I like their viewpoint on news and stuff. You know, we do stuff like that for you guys. So with that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. You know, continue to play video games. And once again, let's be better to one another. Uh, definitely during this time with people definitely going to school. And a lot of game announcements be coming for Let's be better to one another about that. So, uh, with that, everybody, we will see you next time on Wasp Podcast.